G'day, Sambo here. It's about 11am, Saturday 15th of October 2016. There's my two main PV arrays. Now right now, I'm using one, two, three of these panels. With my current battery system, and I'll give you a quick look at that a bit later on, that's enough on sunny days like this to get me to float at about midday and to pretty much keep you there for the rest of the day. I don't use a whole lot of power here. Um, those two panels on the left at the bottom, one and two, that's what I started off with last month. I added that third one there, that's a, so that's a 900 watt array. One, two, three, four, eight panels, 260 watts. That one there, well, these are polycrystalline, that one there is 265 watts, monocrystalline. The voltage and the amperage on that is very similar, and we're talking less than one amp difference, less than one volt difference to these. These are going to be hooked up in three strings in series. So it'll be something like one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Something like that. Don't know exactly yet. There's over three kilowatt of panels. Now, my normal theory is that Unless you have an absolute excess of electricity, you should not be using electricity to heat anything. Because it's a good way, heating something is a good way to burn through electricity. But with this setup, I will have an excess of electricity. Even right now, I've got an excess of electricity just using three of those panels. So what I'm going to do, and I'll give this panel here, give these panels a clean today as well. That's affecting output. Um, I'm going to get use two of these panels in series, and I'm going to heat water. So what I've done, let's see if I can find this. All right, I've got this element custom made from Romar in Melbourne, Victoria. 600 watts, 48 volts. See there, manufacture date 0916, September 2016. This is a bolt on element, bolt on sickle element because of the hot water system I'm using, it needs a curved element like that. It cost me $100 with shipping and a few weeks' wait. Made to order. They will make element to any order, any specification that you want. You can get it done overnight. You're going to charge, they'll charge an extra 85% for interrupting their. Uh, workflow. There's my 80 litre water heater. Eventually it's going to be plumbed in line with the tankless propane heater there. So that will act as a preheater basically. So it doesn't matter if it gets hot, hot, hot. As long as it gets warmer, it's less propane that needs to be used. So I'm just going to take out the old element. Now the reason it's got the curve in it is because the sacrificial anode comes down through the centre of the tank so it's got to fit around that. That's that fitted. Now for the rest of the fun and games. I've got a switch, I've got a th thermostat, 75 degrees Celsius snap disc thermostat. I'm just waiting on some double height side of the heat, thermal adhesive, and I'll just glue that there. For now, 
until I can get that adhesive that can just sit there loose it's going to take a fair while to heat this water up so it's not in any danger yet and as well as that we've got um, pressure release I've got a switch here you might be able to hear something tripping we'll go have a look at that and I'll show you how that's how it works for now and how it's going to work in the future once I get the next big battery system set up all right so this is the control center for the water heater this here is the 12 volt positive bus this is the 12 volt negative bus there's an automatic relay at the moment um, you can see there it's only a single throw relay in the future I'll have a double throw relay in there so power comes from the positive bus into the relay into the coil comes out of the coil goes out to the water heater to the through the switch and the thermostat so normally the switch would be closed the thermostat's also closed power comes running back through here that keeps the coil energized which then energizes this big chunky relay here rated for 200 amps at 48 volts so here's the positive bus from the pv array there's a negative bus from the pv array so what's going to happen today when I go back out, I'll turn that switch on. This relay will close, it's normally open. Power will come in through the relay, out, out the relay, out to the heating element, come back to the negative bus, and that wire goes back to the PV array. In the future, once I get my other big system set up, I'll have this relay done as well and what will happen then once this relay once the thermostat trips it'll open there will be a double throw relay here it will switch it'll it'll open this relay close this relay and power will then go from the pv array to the charge controller so I'll have this set up so that its primary purpose is to heat water. And once the water is hot, then it can charge the batteries. But I've put that switch in out at the water heater, so I've got a manual override. So at any time all I have to do is walk to the water heater, flick the switch off, and then I can send power to the charge controller. So there's one bank of batteries. 2 volt 630 amp hour batteries in series for a nominal 24 volts. Second hand, I paid less than $500 for those. These batteries, 12 volt 75 amp hour batteries, they cost me nothing. They're installed into a shopping center in 2013. I had them off, char off charge for about nine months and we're doing fairly well at the moment um, i've got them set up in series parallel for 24 volts so 12 24 12 24 bus bars linking them up positive over there negative over there to the inverter inverter there ground earth Charge controller, isolators, um, circuit breakers there, power to the rest of the house. Alright, so I've got wired up. I will get some heat shrink to cover these connections, but for now, a bit of tape's going to do. One thing I didn't mention earlier about heating elements, they're a resistive element. It does not matter if it's AC or DC going through it, it gives off heat. What is important, and I'll have another video to explain that once I get my 
crap metre back here and I'm able to show volts and watts and all it, volts and amps. It's important to have the resistance of the element matched to your power supply coming in. So it's no good having a 2400 watt element designed for uh, 240 volts AC or just designed for 240 volts if you're only running 24 volts through it. That'll be a lesson for an upcoming video though where I'm able to get on the computer and, and show examples of why that's so. But for now, I'll turn this on and I've got power going through. It'll be heating up. While I've been talking, I've had the uh, thermometer sitting in this jug of water. 17.5 degrees Celsius. It's about 26 degrees Celsius outside at the moment.